In this tutorial, we'll connect the DigitalOcean server to GitHub via an SSH key, configure and compile the Phoenix app, and create a release. Then, we'll set up port forwarding from Nginx to the Phoenix app. The server needs to connect to the GitHub repository, but before that is possible, we need to install git with sudo apt get install git. Next, we'll generate an SSH key and add it to GitHub. This will be a lot simpler than before since we'll just be using the default settings. So run SSH keygen and just press enter. We'll grab the public key contents generated in ID RSA pub. Copy the contents and head over to GitHub. From your repository page, go to settings. Once there, find deploy keys on the left sidebar. Click on add deploy key. Add a title and paste the contents of your public key. You can also choose to allow a write access to the repository from the server, but that will not be necessary since the code will always be pulled into the server. Click add key, type in your password and you should be good to go. Back on the code section of the repository, click on clone or download button and copy the git path. You should now be able to pull in the code from the server. Type git clone and paste your repository path. You'll be asked to confirm the authenticity of the source the first time. Once that is done, you can now cd into the app folder. You can check that git is connected by running git pull and you should see that you have all the latest changes. Grab the dependencies with mix depth git. You will be asked to install the hex package manager since this is what will actually fetch the dependencies. Next, get into the assets directory and type npm install. It is a good idea to run this manually the first time to confirm that node and npm are installed correctly. Taking a look at JavaScript dev dependencies from package.json, you can see that Webpack and Webpack CLI are required in the dev environment. Because we're going to need them to compile the assets on the server, I want to install Webpack and Webpack CLI globally. So run sudo npm install dash g webpack and sudo npm install dash g webpack CLI. Get out of the assets directory with cd dot dot. Taking a look at the config prod.exs file, you can see that the prod secrets will be imported as the last step. Remember, this file was ignored by version control, so it has to be created here. Create the file by typing vim config prod.secrets.exs. The first thing to do is to declare that this is a mix config file. Then we'll add the database settings. Start with config OMGineering OMGineering repo. The host will be 127.0.0.1. Be sure to keep or omit the quotes since the distinction is important even as a configuration. Add port, database, username, and password. We'll set the pool size to 10, which I think is the default. Then we'll need to add the web endpoint settings. Type config omgineering omgineering web dot endpoint. Now make sure you have your app name with web in here. That is very important. If you don't add the web, it's not going to error, but the app endpoint will not run. Specify server true and add HTTP port and socket settings. Add the URL host and port settings, which will be used to generate URLs within the app. Next, add check origin, which is necessary if you are doing something with WebSockets and using a reverse proxy, which we are in this case. Here you're declaring that you have a socket connection from any one of these domains. I'm not sure they're all necessary, but I'm just adding all permutations of port 4000 as well as the standard web port that will forward to 4000. Finally, we'll need a secret key base. We can generate one using the Phoenix app, so save and quit out of this file and run 
Mix Phoenix Gen Secret. Now if this is the first time you run a mix command inside of the app, it needs to be compiled before executing the mix command. After the app compiles, you'll see the output, which is our secret string. Now running this command again will obviously not take as long since the app already compiled. So copy the key and get back into the prod secrets file and paste it into the secret key base setting. Save and quit. Next, type npm run deploy dash dash prefix dot slash assets. The prefix means that we'll actually want to run this command inside of the assets directory. After the JavaScript assets are compiled, run mix phoenix digest to generate the static assets file. Notice how we did not specify the environment for that command. Now we're going to specify the environment with mix and prod mix compile, which will again compile the application, but in the production environment. So if there are any syntax issues with the prod secrets file that was created, you will get an error during compilation here. Next, we need to create the database with mix and prod mix ecto create. If this succeeded, that means all the database settings in prod secrets file were correct. Now we can run mix ecto migrate to create the table. And our app is now good to go. And you can run mix env prod mix release. Subsequently, you will be asked to confirm to override the release if you did not increase your version. Once the release was created, you can start the app with the provided command. Look for the web endpoint port 4000 and your domain name specified in the log. If you see it, that means everything is going according to plan and you can check out your app at port 4000, omitting HTTPS. And there it is, so far so good. Control C twice to stop the application for now. What we're going to do next is set up port forwarding in the Nginx configuration sudo vim into etc nginx sites available and your domain name file and add upstream phoenix section at the very top specify the server at 127.0.0.1 port 4000 next delete everything inside the location section and replace it with allow all then add the proxy header settings to forward the actual header information to the application with proxy HTTP version variable and the variables specifying the AP address of the client. I made a mistake here. It should be x forward did for. So make sure you add the ed in your settings. Then the WebSocket specific header information. And finally, set proxy pass to go to the HTTP Phoenix upstream that was declared above. Save and quit. Confirm that the configuration syntax is OK and restart Nginx with sudo systemctl restart Nginx. Now back at the browser, reload the page and get nothing. And this was frustrating because I was not really sure what was going on here. I expected to get a 502 error because nginx should forward to port 4000 and the application isn't running at this time. So I tried restarting and reloading nginx a bunch of times expecting a different result while doing the same thing which is a true cornerstone of DevOps culture and produces results more often than you would think. Reload is the command you run to reload the configuration without restarting so that's why I was trying both. So finally, I decided to stop Nginx, figuring that if I see the same page, there must be some kind of caching issue. And sure enough, I still saw the HTML page displayed. So trying this in incognito mode, I was able to show that nothing is running at this domain, which is what I expected. So I started Nginx, and this was the happiest I've ever been seeing a 502 error. So back on the main browser page, what actually worked was reloading the page with command shift R. 
So after all that, it is time to start the app. You can run the command to list all start commands. You can start the app with a console or as a daemon. At this point, I just started to see that the port forwarding actually works, and it does. So there's just one more thing I want to test, and that is to confirm that the database actually works so I can display a list of videos. So I'm going to start the app with a console, and just like before, I'm going to grab the URL to a video and create the attributes for the videos table. Then I'm going to create the record and head back to the browser, reload the page and see the rendered link. One final thing to do is to start the app in the daemon mode running in the background so you could exit out of the server and the app will still be running. So after starting the app, confirm that it still works and that's it. You can exit the server with the Phoenix app running in the background. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this series. I know there are more automated ways to deploy a Phoenix app, but I think this manual step-by-step -step way makes it easier to debug issues at specific steps and overall a more thorough learning experience. So I hope this was useful and thank you for watching.